Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX version 3. So in this video then, now that we've got the Robin on the screen, I'd actually like to um, look at detecting touches on the screen and also implementing something called the update loop. The touches is uh, fairly straightforward in terms of what we want to do. We want to obviously detect when our finger taps the screen or the mouse clicks the screen. An update loop is basically a function or uh, that is called once every frame. Now we can see inside the app delegate that the target for this um, or speed frames per second for this application is 60 frames a second. That's fairly standard. And we want a function inside our hello world scene.cpp that is called 60 times a second or each frame. And then inside that frame, we do all of our game updates when things are moving and such like that. So if we touch the screen and the robin jumps, then each time our update function is called, we recalculate the new position of the robin depending on the gravity and its current speed and stuff like that, which you'll see in a couple of videos time. So in this video, I want to add this game update in and just show that that's running. And I also want to detect touches. Now the touch detection is very different in Cocos 2DX version 3 than it was in version 2. And in fact, I had to go and have a look exactly how it's done because it's completely different. And this made me actually think it might be relatively useful for you just to show you something that does exist inside the package you get. You can see here I've got the unpack zip of um, version 3.1 RC0. And inside there, you'll see here that there's a tests folder. And if you go into CPP tests and then classes, what this actually is here is a complete project for Android iOS or whatever that you could open in whichever ID and contains a huge amount of tests um, for testing the Cocos 2DX framework. But in other words, what this provides for you is actually a really, really simple way to go and look at how the various parts of the um, framework are implemented. So for instance, to look at the touches, I went into the touches test and here we've got a little application with a paddle and a ball, so you can already guess what's going on, and the touches test here. And simply all I, all I did then was, well, I've had a look at all the files, but the main files are the paddle and the touches test. If I just open these now in Xcode, so they're going to OK, open like this. If we have a quick look at these uh, files, then, then we'll get into the program proper, just to show the way around it. But the first, the first place I went was touches, uh, touches test.h which has a scene and then has a pong layer inheriting from a layer that's all very good and then has a paddle as well which is the class we have over here and I went into the dots cpp and fairly standard stuff going on in there and the first thing I noticed here was that we had this schedule schedule selector do step and this actually is the update function I was just talking about. So this already show this is the thing that's called then with the delta time, this do step here, and this is where all the updating is done off the ball inside this test. So here it was already easy to see how we schedule this function um, to be called every once every frame. However, this still didn't deal with the touches, and this is where things are a bit different in Cocos 2DX version 3. The actual touch stuff is in the paddle class, and you can see here that in the public definitions here, we've got on touch began, moved, and touch ended, which is familiar from the previous versions of Cocos 2DX. So just dropped into the C uh, file here to have a look at how it was done. And it's got this on enter, which is a virtual overridden function here, called on enter for the sprite. And now here's the touch stuff that's done. So a listener is made, and then the listener is set to swallow touches. And then the listeners uh, has some uh, on, on touch began is set to the touch began for uh, the paddle class here. So that basically says when a touch begins, then the on touch began here will be called and the other two are self-explanatory. And there's an event dispatcher which has this listener then added to it. Now, what you can do then when you're looking at this yourselves, obviously, is um, if you actually open the tester's project, then you could right click on this and have a look at the definition of it. And I've done that and go back through the event listener classes, which I must say are pretty complicated. Um, but suffice to say, it's fairly easy to understand that you need to drop this bit of code in. And depending on whether you want began, moved or ended or even all three, you need those in and then to define those functions in this way.
So a bit of a long-winded explanation there, but I just wanted to show that that um, with Cocos 2DX version 3, they really do provide here um, everything that you need to do, or an example of how to do everything inside the framework. So accelerometer testing, box 2D testing, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, there's a sprite test somewhere, which I had a very quick look at before I started this uh, project as well. Very, very simple, where the code here just sets up a sprite and stuff. So really, really good um, resource there that's already available for you if you're wondering how something is done. So without going on too much, as I think I'm prone to do in this series for some reason, let's get on with actually, uh, first of all, adding the update loop into our project. So I'll put it in the private section. I'm just going to call it game update. I'll put that with a lower class G actually, a uh, lowercase, sorry, G. And then um, just put float and DT for delta time. So we have our game update function. And then just drop it into hello world scene.cpp. And below the init function and the initialization, then we can put this function inside here and just put hello world game update like so. So the game update then is being called. And let's just log this update to the screen with the delta time as well. So I'll just put uh, hello world game update and delta time with a percentage F and DT. And this will print the time that um, lapsed since the previous call to the update in seconds into the console. So it's going to scroll very quickly, but at least it's worth having a look at it. So we just saw the, the code sorry, to actually schedule this in. So that was um, schedule. And then it was schedule selector. You can see there are various um, versions of this here. So we've got the selector. You could do it with an interval, whether you want to repeat or not, and a delay before you start calling. Here you can just say what interval you want to um, call the certain function at. So it gets called every once every your specified interval. And this one here simply says call it as often as possible, which would then be once every frame. So here we write uh, schedule selector. And then inside here, we just need the actual uh, name of the function so we've got our game update like so and we don't need anything else on there. Okay so this should now if I run the application scroll in the console then the game update. I'll just lift the console up a bit and run the application. And now you see down the console here scrolling we've got we're getting, as you can see, this bottom left number here, around 60 frames a second, despite recording at the same time. And you can see the interval in seconds, which is generally 0.01617, something like that, seconds. But the game update um, function is being called basically once every frame. So we can be satisfied, satisfied that's working. I'm just going to comment this line out because we don't need that running all the time. So the next thing we want to do then is add in the detection of touches. So to do this, we've already seen inside the test code that I showed you, we need to put in our on touches began. So we'll say bool and on touches began. Uh, I think it was called actually on touch began. Let's keep it exactly the same as the example. And then we've got cocos 2D and touch, we point it to a touch and cocos 2D and event pointer to events. That's our function definition there. And then we can drop into hello world scene.cpp then and just below the game update, just add in our function so that everything's okay. And what we'll do then inside the init function, initialization function then is, or oh, I'll just drop a return true inside here. This return true or false you can use then here to actually say whether you want to actually process the touch or not. And let me just take this E out of here and this E out of here. So yes, you can use the true then to say whether you actually want to accept the touch or not in certain cases in your game. Say something's being processed, when something's being touched you don't want the touches to be accepted. Um, uh, but we're, at the moment we'll just leave this as return true. And then what we need to do now is implement this code inside the bottom of the initialization function here, the init function, just to detect the touches. And we'll do this before we schedule the updater. I tend to like to uh, put the scheduling of the game updater last when everything else, waiting for everything else to be initialized. So copying the code then, we want to say an auto listener. That's copying the code from the, um, the example that was provided, look. And we want event listener and it was event listener touch by one, I think. Touch by one. And then we want to just call create like so. So that gets our listener. And now we can say listener and set swallow touches 
and true. And now we can set the on touch began. So we can say listener and on touch began. And we need to tell it then that we want this CC callback to. And then the selector is hello world and on touch began. And I'll just take all of this argument stuff out of here because everything is as confusing as it can be. And then this, obviously the target is this because it's this class where we're calling the selector. So that's the on touch began then added um, to the listener. And then last but not least, we have this event dispatcher in here, which again has a line through it, um, but is used in the example code from Kogos 2 dx So we'll also use it and we'll have event listener. I've had a look at these priorities here. Um, we need to use this one with scene graph priority. And then the listener is what we're sending in. And again, the node is this node that we're listening to the touch on. And that's all we need to do then to set that up. And now this function on touch began will be called whenever we tap the screen. One thing, of course, that's good to do, though, is to log this to the screen just to make sure that we're processing our touches OK and have a look at what the coordinates are. So we'll say that we've got uh, on touch began here. And then the X and the Y. So we can have a look and that will be then touch and it's get location and X and touch and get location and Y and this should then give us our touch on the screen or in the console. So just run the application again and we've got the application up here then and I'm just going to touch and you can see down the bottom here then I've got the coordinates. If I go very somewhere bottom left we've got the small X and uh, Y and right into the top right hand corner 953 and 632. By the way I realized I'd left the code the last couple of videos with the resolution of 800 by 500. I've changed that back now to 960 by 640 so right up in the top corner here I've got 953 maybe I can get close to 960 k okay, 959 that'll do and right up to the top there 636. Okay so we can see that our coordinates are basically that we're getting um, the, the coordinates that we're getting from the on touch began using the touch get location is giving us the coordinate in pixels and that's important to know for the future when we start dealing with um, locations on the screen. Okay then, so that's that video ended. We haven't done much as far as the application is concerned, but we have done a lot in terms of preparation now because what we can do in the next video, we can actually look at making the robin jump up and down on the screen when we touch the screen because we have our game update and we have also our detection of touches. So thanks very much for listening and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.